Kobe beef is a lie. Sorry for all you beef lovers out there, but anytime you've eaten Kobe beef, and probably even eaten um, high quality Wagyu beef, it's most likely been a lie. And here's why. Kobe beef comes from a specific genetic line called Tajima Gyu. And the cows from which Kobe beef comes from has to come from the Hyogo prefecture in Japan and must be slaughtered at specific Hyogo slaughterhouses and pass very, very strict government exams. Now at any given point in time in the world, there are only 3,000 cows in the world that pass as producing Kobe beef. So you really think that hundreds of restaurants in the United States have Kobe beef. And actually here's why I can tell you, if you've eaten Kobe beef in the US, uh, you've been lied to, just flat out lied to, because in the United States, it's even illegal to import Kobe beef. So there, there's no Kobe beef that can come into America unless you've eaten at, a, at like uh, some underground black market restaurant that was secretly and illegally importing Kobe beef into the restaurants, but they're publicly advertising it. It's illegal, so you cannot have eaten any Kobe beef in America. Most likely even in Asia, most of Asia, any restaurant that uh, advertises Kobe beef is just flat out lying to you. Um, so this is a problem that goes on like uh, in many different aspects of the world. We are living in a fantasy world where fantasy overruns the truth. Even with fish, there was a study that came out in the New York Times where um, some agency independently tested the fish that's served up in American restaurants and they discovered that at least 20 to 25 percent, and in some cases in some Florida restaurant, restaurants, 70 percent of restaurants are serving a fish, a more expensive filet, is substituting a cheaper fish for that more expensive filet. So in other words, they're saying on the menu, here's mahi mahi and it's yellowtail. They're saying on the menu, um, here's another kind of fish. I can't remember what it was, but I remember reading the content and they serve you up. Sometimes even endangered shark species and that's what they're substituting, like cheaper fish for more expensive filets. And that's a, even a problem in the grocery store they discovered because when they, when this agency went and tested even expensive fillets in grocery stores, they found that about 25% of these fillets were mislabeled and the grocery stores were serving or selling you much cheaper fish fillets and charging you the expensive fillet price. So why this is important is because today we have a culture where, like I said, Fantasy and lies are more abundant than the truth. I mean, this happens in everything. We are obsessed with a fantasy culture. Even in sports, we have fantasy football, which uh, I, I don't get at all, to tell you the truth. I mean, even when it comes to sports, I'd rather much have a healthy, active lifestyle and play sports than watch it. Although I do confess I still watch sports from time to time, but certainly not as much as when I was younger and, and a kid. So I don't waste that much time anymore. I'd much rather be playing sports, act, you know, being active and having a healthy lifestyle. But today, not only do people care about what sports teams win and lose, but now they have sports, like they live in a fantasy world. That's what fantasy football is, I think, because I never really looked into it. But I know that you can have, you pick players from different teams and make up like a make-believe team and then you see how your make-believe team performs every week. So... You know, we're living in a fantasy world, which is crazy. We have fantasy sports. We have fantasy food, where we're being lied to. And this is where, where how it comes wraps back into finance. We have fantasy education, right? We have business schools that just flat out lie. Everyone, Aaron Brockovich, where are you? Because you should file a class action lawsuit, get students together, and file a class action lawsuit against every business school in the Western world because they all teach lies about the free market. They teach lies about, you know, trusting government statistics that are patent lies. Um, and so, you know, although obviously your big case was hexavalent chromium and poisoning that physically debilitated people, I mean, we are debilitating we have trusted institutions 
they're debilitate, debilitating young adults' minds, which is just as bad as hexavalent chromium. So, or if, if not worse, because once you take away people's ability to think and to critically think for themselves, then it's so easy to pull the wool over the head and lead them like sheep to the slaughter, which is what business schools are doing because they're propagating lies that free markets exist when everything is controlled, when bankers control all commodity prices, such as oil. Why do you think the price of oil drops before every U.S. presidential election? Is it a coincidence or, you know, does the president's administration manufacture a drop in uh, basically in coordination with the bankers so it helps the incumbents uh, possibilities of being reelected I mean it obviously is not a coincidence and and the uh, ambassador the Saudi ambassador at one point uh, was even questioned about this so he had to deny it that the Saudis would acquiesce to the US administration's request to lower the oil prices right before presidential elections to help the incumbents' possibilities of being reelected. And obviously, you know, I've talked a lot about this before about how silver and gold and those commodity prices are manipulated. So there are no free markets. You have a central bank, you cannot have a free market because central banks are perpetually manipulating interest rates. So when you hear Bank of Japan raises interest rates or Bank of Japan drops interest rates or Bank of England drops interest rates or the U.S. Federal Reserve drops interest rates. That is not a free market. That's not a free market that's happening. That you have basically a central, a central private bank run by private families manipulating interest rates to manipulate markets. So you don't have free markets. But yet business schools teach us lie, pollute young adults' brains all the time with these lies and prevent young adults from really understanding what's going on in the world today. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about one of my number one nemesis. I don't know, is that the plural nemesis? Nemesis? Well, anyways, uh, who I consider at the top of my nemesis list when it comes to uh, being able to spread the truth because this man perpetually spreads lies. And the worst part about it is he's an educator because he is a professor of economics and international affairs at Princeton University. And that man is Paul Krugman, who's also one of the most widely quoted, unfortunately, most widely quoted economists in the U.S. media today. So he came out and he said, he wrote an article in the New York Times called The Truth in Jobs or The Truth About Jobs. And he lambasted Jack Welch, who's the CEO of General Electric, for coming out and saying that the recent U.S. unemployment report that showed unemployment decreasing from 8% to 7.5% is a total joke and a total farce, which it is. But Paul Krugman now wants to flat out tell a lie and say it's the truth. That's the, that is the ironic part about this whole thing. Is he's, it's really he's telling a lie about jobs and he titled the article The Truth About Jobs. So this is the level of propaganda and lies that you know, banker shields have gone to these days. And so basically Krugman said, hey, there's nothing wrong with the job report. It's accurate. It's the unemployment rate is only 7.5%. And then he came out and said, it really should be 7% if the Republicans hadn't shot down Obama's latest job creation bill or something like that. So then he tries to take it to the partisan level, which I've warned everyone in previous videos that do not get sucked in to this Democrat versus Republican partisan war because, again, it's just another distraction tactic of the elites at the top. They want you to believe you have a choice, but like I said, uh, as far as this whole theme of this particular uh, vlog is concerned, it's a, just a lie. You know, the whole dichotomy between Republicans and Democrats is a false dichotomy. It's an illusion. There's not any difference between the two. They both work for the elite. They both work to perpetuate uh, the uh, bankers' wishes, which is clear if you look at the last 20 years. There's been no change in fiscal policy, no matter if there's been a Democrat or Republican in president. So that should be a dead giveaway. Um, so Krugman comes out and says, hey, all you got to do is go to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics um, site and they'll tell you how they compile uh, the labor, the unemployment statistics. And if you do, you see that it's a uh, total truth, that 7.5%. Which is really funny because if you go to the site, you'll find out it's a lie. But Krugman understands. He's a clever dude. He understands that we, we are living in an ADD 
world today. And uh, no one will ever go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website and read the fine print and discover that in the past 20 years, they stripped away every component of unemployment. So that's how they get such a low unemployment rate. But if you took the equation that they used to use 20 years ago, you understand that unemployment is really twice as high as what the BLS says it is. But, you know, they do all kinds of tricky things regarding unemployment statistics like um, if hundreds of thousands or millions of people, I think it's millions now in, in the U.S., uh, are just so discouraged because they've been looking for uh, They've been looking for employment for over one year, two years, and certainly there are a lot of people in America that fall in that category, but yet cannot find full-time employment or relegate to part-time employment, that they just stop looking for employment, uh, full-time employment, or they stop looking for employment altogether. They drop off the unemployment raw, which is crazy because they're still without a job, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics says you're not working, you don't have an income, you're not, un you're not unemployed. So that's one way they strip away unemployment statistics. Another way, and then sometimes why you see the um, employment figures uh, fluctuate up and down, is because they will get certain government agencies to create part-time jobs. And then once these part-time jobs go away in three months, six months, uh, what looks like a boost to employment, which looks good, like the economy's recovering, is just a false lie. So it's just an illusion because I know these part-time jobs are going to last six months or so and then fall off. And then these same people are going to be unemployed again. So they sometimes boost these numbers with uh, these uh, part-time programs, which they know are not permanent, but they don't separate that out. So they have these part-time jobs that are created that boost employment numbers. And then it just comes right back down again. So these are just a couple of the tricks. There's so many tricks that they use to falsify these numbers. And Krugman's just going to flat out lie to your face and say that a lie is the truth, which is crazy. That's why I can't stand Krugman. And um, the other thing is, which I mentioned earlier in this video, is that Aaron Brockovich, you should really get... Uh, all these students to bond together that are in business school now because they're learning lies about free markets that do not exist, being taught lies by professors like Paul Krugman about uh, economic statistics that are a total lie and a total farce. And this is deliberate. These business schools are deliberately uh, polluting people's student, young, young adults' minds, telling them not to think for themselves stripping away their ability to understand reality and this is a crime just as serious as hexovalent chromium poisoning because they're poisoning young adults minds and shaping them so that they will not think for themselves in the future so you know why should any student pay $25,000 a year, 20000 I don't even care if it's $5,000 a year. They should not be paying money to be taught lies. So this is a total fraud that's being perpetuated in academia uh, and academic institutions all over the world. So you can file a class action lawsuit against anyone, University of Chicago, Princeton, Harvard, um, and really have a strong case um, until these business schools stop teaching these lies. So that's my message for today, is to stay strong, to always think for yourself, um, and to have clarity in your thought processes, and not to be fooled by these puppets out there that are trying to pollute and poison your mind. Until next time, take care. Have a great day.